Close your eyes. I want to show you something. My heart is literally pounding. Which <laughs> Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, if you are new here, my name is Yarita and this is my husband Drew. I guess by the title of this video you already know what this video is going to be about. And it's going to be about my miscarriage. So in this video, I am going to be sharing my missed miscarriage and I think it's important to talk about it and tell my story. Not only does it help me to heal, but I want to spread awareness because I know that this is very common and unfortunately is not talked about as much. And I know when I was going through it, I turned to YouTube. And listen to the stories that other women had shared and made me feel a little bit less alone and so if you came upon this video because you're searching because you're going through it I just want to let you know that you're not alone and that I hope that this video brings you some clarity particularly as it pertains to a missed miscarriage it feels so hot like my face is burning up <sighs> okay so I'm just going to fast forward through a lot of stuff, but I want to share as much detail as possible when it comes to the miscarriage. And I did write an essay about it with a lot of details on my blog, so if you guys want to read that, I will link it in the description below. So November 10th was my first ultrasound appointment, and that day I would have been eight weeks pregnant. And we were excited for our first uh, appointment, our ultrasound. We were excited to hear the heartbeat and all that stuff. And Drew was allowed in to the room, which I felt lucky because I knew I had heard of other people that because of COVID, partners were not being allowed in. So he was there with me. We were there for our first appointment. And when the transvaginal ultrasound was happening, uh, the doctor was quiet and I thought that that was weird because I thought I would automatically hear something like on the machine and she was being quiet and then she was measuring I noticed that she was measuring what she saw on the screen and then she said that she can't find a heartbeat and that the baby was measuring six weeks and five days and was supposed to be measuring eight weeks. So she didn't confirm that I was automatically having a miscarriage. She wanted to do some blood work to make sure because I could have ovulated late or whatever and my dates could have been wrong. So, or it could have been like too early to hear a heartbeat even though she said, you know, by six weeks we should hear a heartbeat. That was the first day that we got a notion that we were having, possibly having a miscarriage. I feel like the moment she said that, I was like, just transported to another world automatically because I my throat was dry, I started a headache, I was holding all this emotion in, and she sent me to get blood work and she said, I will see you next week to confirm anything. And the moment she left, I started crying with Drew and quickly just gathered myself up and was like, I, I need to just get out of here. We scheduled an appointment with the receptionist, which I was like, she's like, what did the doctor say? And I was like, I don't even know. I couldn't figure out like, does she say next week? I need to do something today and something like 
two days or I don't know. Anyway, she went to ask the doctor. So I was to go to the lab work to get blood work to get HCG tested to see what, where my levels were. And then following two days, I had to go back in to get more blood work done. Again, to measure if my levels were going up or down. The test results get automatically uploaded onto my chart online. So when I saw the results, it had gone up by like 2,000 and I thought, okay, there, there's hope. But then I got an email from the doctor saying the numbers should be doubling. So she said it was consistent with the pregnancy not growing. That week was a really tough week. We cried a lot. We talked about it. But for me, I was holding on to like a slither of hope that the next following Tuesday I would go in to get another ultrasound and that there would be a heartbeat. Since nothing was confirmed, it was just kind of up in the air. I was hoping for the positive outcome. So when the next Tuesday came around, uh, I got a call from the doctor's office the day before telling me that I cannot bring him inside because of COVID numbers going up, so I had to go by myself. So I went into the doctor's, uh, doctor's office, uh, we did another transvaginal ultrasound, and she said again, there was no growth. The baby was still measuring six weeks and five days, and there is no blood flow, and there was no heartbeat. So, so after that, she proceeded to give me my options of what to do next, and my options were to. I forgot what it's called, but basically wait for the tissue to pass on its own. She said, you know, like in a couple of weeks, the tissue will pass on its own, or I can give you medication to help the tissue pass along, or there's surgery, but which technically usually is a DNC, but because of COVID and that being an elective sur surgery, that wouldn't really be an option um, for me at the moment. So, I really only had two options. My first instinct was that I was like, I want this to be over like as soon as possible. But I feel like she was kind of trying to persuade me to just wait on it for it, like for nature to take its course, how she described it. Because let me just explain. Um, so what I, ha the type of miscarriage that happened to me is called a missed miscarriage. So basically that means that the baby stops growing and your body still thinks that you're pregnant. So there is no symptoms, there's no cramps, there's no bleeding that will indicate that there is a miscarriage happening. So you usually find, find out at an appointment when the doctor reveals that there is no heartbeat. So that's what happened to me and I know through this process I had no idea that that could even happen. So. So that's why I was presented with those options. She said your body would, will eventually recognize that it's not a viable, viable pregnancy and it will pass the tissue on its own. That can take a few weeks, a couple of weeks. It can happen tomorrow, it can happen next week. There's just really no time frame. Or you can take the pills and it will speed up the process. You'll be done with it usually within 24 to 48 hours, something like that. So since I wanted it to be over as soon as possible, she did prescribe me the medication. She wanted me to come in in two weeks so that she can follow up and see what has happened. Um, so I went downstairs where Drew was waiting for me and he was like, how'd it go? And I was just like, it was, I literally felt like deja vu was just like a repeat of like the previous week, week. no baby, no, no heartbeat. It's confirmed I'm having a miscarriage. Like it's not, no hope. So, I after that appointment, I waited a week to see if the tissue would pass on its own, and it didn't. So I decided to take the medication a week after, a week before I was supposed to see the doctor again. So November 24th, I decided to take the medication. And there are like four little pills that you insert inside that's supposed to like kickstart the process. I took the pills 30 minutes after. I started bleeding a little bit. I started getting cramps, so I took pain medication that she had prescribed, which was 800 milligram ibuprofen. 
It was nothing crazy at that moment, but soon after, it got really painful. It was the most excruciating pain I have ever felt in my life. A lot of cramps. I guess from the research that I have done, people say there's actually contractions, but I just always like cramps. So, I'm so hot. So that night, because I took the medication like around 10 p.m., so it was at night. That night, we didn't sleep at all. I, the pain intensified, the bleeding intensified. Every couple of hours, I was releasing blood clots and it was just like a sleepless night. But by the time morning came, I was feeling better. Of course, I was still bleeding and whatnot, but I was feeling better, so I thought the worst is behind me. Like, this was it, the, you know, the baby must have passed and with all the blood that I was passing and all that stuff because I felt better and that was Tuesday night waking up Wednesday morning so Wednesday Thursday Friday so I felt better all those days and then Friday I started bleeding again and I thought okay this is my period because you get your period after a miscarriage not that soon but I was like okay like I already went to my through my miscarriage so I, I thought I was bleeding because it was my period because it wasn't like anything crazy uh it was just like blood and then that night going to sleep woke up in the middle of the night again to like excruciating pain having a lot more cramps a lot of more blood clots passing by the only reason why we didn't go to the hospital was because i'm thinking that it's my period and that they say that your first period after miscarriage you it's gonna be a lot heavier and your cramps are gonna be a lot more intense than your normal period and i didn't have a fever so I was like, okay, I'm just gonna weigh this out. I felt again better in the morning and I had the whole day and I was feeling better and then go to sleep in the middle of the night, wake up again to intense cramps and passing blood clots. But the blood clots were a little bit lesser or smaller than the night before, so I'm thinking, okay, whatever is going, whatever is happening, I, it's getting better. So that happened and then we're back to Monday. So it's been six days since I, since I took the medication and I was feeling fine. Uh, there was no warning. I go to the restroom and uh, something just literally fell out of me. Um, and I look and I instantly recognize that I just knew that that was the placenta with the baby sack uh, attached to it. And I was by myself. And so, I scooped it out because I've heard that you can scoop it out, you can clean it and, and whatever, collect it. So I did and I washed it and put it in a container and I just literally stared at it for hours. I Googled images of what a fetus is supposed to look like at six weeks just to make sure make sure I'm not like crazy and by the other images that I had saw that I saw I'm pretty sure that that's what I was looking at so I take pictures of it because I want to show the doctor and my appointment was the next day so my appointment uh, December 1st they call me again, they say that Drew can't come in, that I have to go by myself. So he didn't come with me, I went by myself, because at this point I'm thinking like, okay, like, it's over, like, she just needs to clear me. I was not prepared for what happened that day. So I go to the appointment, I show her the picture, she says, yep, that's it, that's the placenta and, and the sack and the baby and, and whatnot. And so she says, okay, like, just need to like look in, look inside and, and make sure everything's good. So I lay down on the bed, she looks inside and she tells me that there's still some left inside. So she tells me that she, I have two options. I can, she can give me more medication, I can go home, take more pills and wait for it to pass on its own and or that she can just go in and take it out. Now, without hesitation, I was like, I just want this to be over. So she's like, okay, let me go get my tools. Maybe I should have asked more questions about what would that entail, but I didn't. And she did not explain anything, really. All she told me was that both options would be uncomfortable. I already experienced the medication and, I was, and it took a whole week for the placenta to pass after taking the medication. So I lay down, she props me open with a speculum and she proceeds to like 
insert these like metal tools to like scrape out what's inside and um, it was really really painful and uncomfortable and then so she's done and so she's like just to be clear let's do a transvaginal ultrasound again to look inside and make sure that there's nothing left and there was still some left I'm way up high in my cervix so she says that she has to go back in and I think at that point I was so I feel like I was just being chipped away at and so she I, I lay back down and she goes back in and she has to go in higher so it was even more painful more uncomfortable and at that point I was just so she goes back in scrapes the rest of it out and has to go back in with another transvaginal ultrasound to clear me make sure that we're 100% everything's out and thank god everything was out but and then literally her tone just changed and she goes and she's happy and she's like happy holidays and i'm sure i'll see you uh pretty soon when you when you're pregnant again i was completely just broken like i felt physically broken mentally emotionally i was drained i I don't know, I was disoriented. She leaves the room and I completely break down. Um, but again, I'm like, okay, I just wanna get dressed and get out of here. The moment I get up from the bed, I am in so much pain. I can't like walk straight. So I stagger down the hallway to the elevator, to the parking structure to pay. And literally like one of those machines like to pay for your parking and I couldn't even figure it out. I the security guard came over and was like may I and took my credit card and like processed the transaction for me I don't even know if I said thank you I, I was so lost I make it to my car and I just completely started crying I was angry I, I was alone I was sad and just a lot a lot going through my head at that moment and Again, I had to like gather myself because now I had to drive myself to my house. Luckily, the hospital is like five minutes down the street, but I was in pain. I was in pain and getting home to an empty house because Drew wasn't here. He was at work and I just like fell down to the ground like crying. I was crying for hours until Drew got home and that entire day was, I feel like the worst day of like this entire process is at that point, like Every single thing that has happened and led to that day was just like, just chipping away at, at everything. I don't know, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I'm so hot. I'm just... Sorry, I had to take a break or take a second to gather my thoughts. So basically, you know, that last appointment was December 1st. And so at that point I had been dealing with the fact that I'm having a miscarriage for three or, three or four weeks now, Th three weeks since November 10th so it's just like emotionally draining and if you guys have been part of this YouTube channel for a little bit now you guys saw that I did vlogmas in December and really that's what kept me like getting up every day I was having something that I was doing so thank you for joining me on that journey you know December 1st was when I released my first video and I remember going on Instagram and like having to say hey guys I released my first video but I was so I did it later during the day and someone a couple of people had to get me and were like are you okay like your energy is so low and I ended up telling those people because there were people that I can confide in yeah I mean I don't know where I'm going with that but that's basically it that's the that's my story with the miscarriage it felt final on december 1st but truthfully the bleeding didn't stop until like another month so my body was still recovering and then the grief is still here we're we're still grieving you know we have our good days we have our laughs and all that stuff but it's still like a hard pill to swallow um, yeah i wanted to just share the story you know i feel like the more people share their stories the less alone we could feel and the less 
taboo this topic would become. You have like people like Meghan Markle and Chrissy Teigen sharing their stories and people still have the need to say that they shouldn't be sharing their story which is ridiculous so yeah so that's my story i wanted to share it because like i said in the beginning i want to it's part of my grieving process and i want to spread awareness and make sure that if anyone out there is going through something similar that or have gone through something similar that they do not feel alone you are not alone one in four pregnancies end in a miscarriage. I am blessed that you guys are here and that continue to follow and support my journey. I really appreciate you, but we will continue to keep moving forward in life. If you feel called to share your story or a piece of your story, please do so in the comments um, so that other women know that they are not alone. We are a lot. Of people that have gone through this or are going through this so i love you guys so much stay safe and i'll see you guys in another video